Good afternoon, everyone. Here I am continuing the course of the lecture dedicated to the systematic pathology. And today I'll try to explain you the basis of rheumatic diseases. What does it mean, rheumatic diseases? Rheumatic diseases, uh, there's a group of collagen or uh, systemic connective tissue diseases, including rheumatic fever, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, scleroderma, dermatomyositis, and uh, polyarthritis nodosa, as well as bacterial disease. In fact, there are much more diseases in this group, but uh, there is no time for discussing all of them. We will, I will show you uh, some information about the most common. All these diseases are characterized by affect of collagen, a connective tissue, due to disturbances of immune homeostasis. So, which means all of these diseases somehow are associated with the uh, immunopathology. And those knowledges that you will probably uh, remember from previous semester, and this information is still in your brains, you can use for understanding of this uh, quite um, complex topic. Disturbances of immune homeostasis, uh, development of autoimmune reactions, formation of the toxic immune complexes and sensibilization of cells, injury of microcell creation with uh, following systemic progressive disorganization of connective tissue are main links of pathogenesis of rheumatic diseases. So there's the red letters and this is the red line of this lecture. However, interestingly, what is the origin of the term rheumatic? Why rheumatic? Perhaps you think that it's due to the rheumatism or rheumatic fever, whatever. But in fact, in fact, the term rheumatism by itself has the group of the diseases. You should understand that term rheumatism in English is not the same as the rheumatism in Ukraine, Ukrainian. Uh, in Ukrainian language, rheumatism uh, is the synonym of rheumatic fever. But in English, rheumatism, that's exactly the rheumatic diseases. So, what does it mean, rheumatism? It refers to rheumatism, ultimately from Greek, uh, to suffer from a flux. To suffer from a flux. Which flux? Here there's rheum. Rheum meaning bodily fluids. So in such a way any discharge of blood or bodily fluid, uh, ancient doctors, ancient medicine consider as the rheumatism. However, later in 17th century the joint pain which was thought to be caused by viscose humors sipping into the joints and was always referred to as good, a word adopted in Middle English from Old French gote, a drop, the goat, rheumatism. So, and please don't be confused as present day specific term referring to excess of uric acid. You see, everything is confused in time, so something that ancient medicine considered as uh, one disease now uh, they are different diseases of different names but traditionally uh, rheumatism now is attached exactly to the group of the disease which are characterized by uh, those attributes that i mentioned above so what are the general characteristics of rheumatic diseases there's the presence of chronic infectious focus. Somehow it could be present, sometimes not. Uh, it could be also the presence of early systemic changes of 
microcirculation. Presence of hypersensitivity of immediate type with development of exudative you know, necrotic reactions and or hypersensitivity of delayed type with formation of cellular infiltrate. Uh, also, the two characteristics of rheumatic diseases belong systemic progressive disorganization of connective tissue includes something that you already studied in previous semester in the topic of extracellular matrix injury. Now you can see how useful this information was, because as you remember, it was the consequence of events of the injury in extracellular matrix, such as mucoid swelling, fibrinoid changes, including fibrinoid necrosis, cellular reactions, like inflammation and finally sclerosis. So, usual consequence, injury, inflammatory response, healing. Chronic recurrent diseases, they are because this cycle could be repeated several times. And also, this group of diseases uh, got some kind of genetic background and also includes uh, include environmental factors which are important for development of these diseases. And we are beginning from rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever is an acute, immunologically mediated, multi-system inflammatory disease classically occurring a few weeks after an episode of group A streptococcal pharyngitis. Occasionally, rheumatoid, uh, rheumatic fever can follow streptococcal infections at other sites, such as the skin. Acute rheumatic uh, carditis is a common manifestation of acute rheumatic fever and may progress over time to chronic rheumatic heart disease RHD mainly manifesting as valvular abnormalities so as William Boyd told rheumatic fever leaks the joints but bite, bite the heart. So, RHD is characterized principally by deforming fibrotic valvular disease, particularly involving the mitral valve. Indeed, RHD is virtually the only cause of mitral stenosis. The incidence and mortality rate of rheumatic fever and RHD have declined remarkably in many parts of the world, world over the past century as a result of improved sanitation and rapid diagnosis and treatment of streptococcal pharyngitis. Nevertheless, in developing countries and in many crowded, economically depressed urban areas, rheumatic heart disease remains an important public health problem affecting an estimated 15 million people. So, what about the pathogenesis of this disease? Acute rheumatic fever results from host immune responses to group A streptococcal antigens that cross-react with host proteins. So here, just a reminder for you which groups of the um, hypersensitivities we will mention during this lecture. And as you may see, uh, just to remind you, there are four types. Three of them are of immediate type, like type 1, type 2, type 3, and the lab type, type 4. And as you may notice, as you can remember, three immediate types of 
uh, hypersensitivity are somehow in one way or another are associated with the uh, involvement of antibodies and never never antibodies are involved into delayed type type 4 of hypersensitivity so which type of hypersensitivity is uh, involved into a rheumatic fever let's check so you should understand that in particular antibodies and cd4 t cells directed against streptococcal m proteins And then you can also, in some cases, recognize cardiac self-antigens. Antibody binding can activate complement as well as recruit FC receptor bearing cells, neutrophils and macrophages. Cytokine production by the stimulated T cells leads to macrophage activation, for example, within ash of bodies, damage to heart tissue may thus be caused by combination of antibody and T cell mediated reactions. Just to remind you that M proteins, that's exactly the membrane antigens of group A streptococci. So you see that susceptible host with group A streptococcus infection mounts an autoimmune reaction by formation of autoantibodies against bacteria and these autoantibodies cause damage to human tissues due to cross reactivity. Streptococcal epitopes, as, we to as I told you, just to resume, present on the bacterial cell wall. And the streptococcal M protein are immunologically identical to human molecules of mazine, keratin, actin, laminin, pimentin, and, uh, and acetylglycosamine. So, as you may see, the reaction of antibodies as cross reactivity resembles friendly fire in the modern warfare art. Well, uh, pathogenesis of RF and RHD we briefly discussed. So that's molecular mimicry, mimicry and cross reactivity. Just to remind you about the morphogenesis, morphological changes in the connective tissue at rheumatic fever. Just to remind you that uh, this group of diseases, rheumatic diseases, sometimes called collagenosis, because most of them are associated with the deter deterioration and inflammatory processes in the connective tissue. So, first of all, the morphological changes are started from mucoid swelling, swelling, edema of the connective tissues, then finally it leads to the fibrinoid changes that can lead to fibrinoid degeneration and necrosis. Cellular reactions as a response to these necrotic events by infiltration in lymphocytes, plasma cells, histocytes, and fibroblasts. And the most distinctive proliferative lesion is the granulomatose phase of a show bodies. So during acute RF, focal inflammatory lesions are found in various tissues. Distinctive lesion in the heart, as ash of bodies, consisting of foci of T lymphocytes, occasional plasma cells, plump activated macrophages called Anchikov cells. 
these macrophages have abundant cytoplasm and central round to avoid nuclei, occasionally binucleate, in which the chromatin condenses into a central, slender, wavy ribbon, hence caterpillar cells. Look, caterpillar, important word, caterpillar. Do you remember Alice in Wonderland, caterpillar? It smoked hookah on the mushroom. So just remember this keyword. I will ask you later in the end of the uh, lecture. You will fill the survey. So caterpillar would be a question about caterpillar. During acute uh, rheumatoid fever, rheumatic fever, Diffuse inflammation and ash of bodies may be found in any of three layers of the heart, resulting in pericarditis, myocarditis, or endocarditis. Pancarditis, like the inflammation of entire heart, all walls of the heart. Inflammation of the endocardium and left-sided well, valves typically results in fibrinoid necrosis within the cusps of tendinous cords overlying these necrotic foci and along the lines of closure are small 1 to 2 mm vegetations called Verica. Thus, uh, rheumatic heart disease is one of the forms of vegetative valve disease, each of which exhibit their own characteristic morphologic features. Subendocardial lesions, perhaps, perhaps exacerbated by regurgitant jets, can induce irregular thickening called maccallum plex, usually in the left atrium. The cardinal anatomic changes of the mitral valve in chronic RHD are leaflet thickening, commissural fusion, and shortening and thickening and fusion of the tendinous cords. In chronic disease, the mitral valve is virtually always involved. The mitral valve is affected in isolation in roughly two-thirds of RHD and along with the aortic valve in another 25% of cases. Tricuspid valve involvement is infrequent and the pulmonary valve is only rarely affected. Because of the increase of calcific aortic stenosis and the reduced frequency of RHD, rheumatic aortic stenosis now accounts for a small fraction of cases of acquired aortic stenosis. So see, here you can find the occurrence of the rheumatic valvulitis. In rheumatic mitral stenosis, the calcification and fibrose bridging across the valvular commissures create fish mouth or buttonhole stenosis. Fish mouth or buttonhole stenosis. See it was first caterpillar, now we're talking about fish mouth, so fish and caterpillar, that's the two animals of this lecture which 
you should remember because I will ask you that on the lecture survey. Continue. Fish mouth. With tight mitral stenosis, the left atrium progressively dilates and may harbor mural thrombi that can embolize. Long-standing congestive changes in the lungs may induce pulmonary vascular and parenchymal changes. Over time, this can lead to the right ventricular hypertrophy. The left ventricle is largely unaffected. by isolated pure mitral stenosis. Microscopically, valves show organization of the acute inflammatory uh, reaction with post-inflammatory neovascularization and transmural fibrosis that obliterate the leaflet architecture. Ashraf bodies are rarely seen in surgical specimen of autopsy tissue from patients with chronic RHD as a result of the long intervals between the initial insult and the development of the chronic deformity. So, as you may see, there are extra cardiac lesions of rheumatic fever included the subcutaneous nodules just small five to two centimeters spherical ovoid uh, and painless uh, the characteristic locations are extensive surface of the wrists elbows ankles and knees so large uh, joints histologically they consist of still ash of bodies Another exocardiac lesion, that's the erythema marginatum. This non pruritic erythematose rash, and this erythema is transient and migratory. Korea minor is a delayed manifestation of rheumatic fever as a result of involvement of the central nervous system, basically, the vessels. In connective tissue of the meninges. It could lead to a several uh, so-called Korea minor, as you may see that sand wheat dance. Extra cardiac lesions include also the poriarthritis, this inflammation of synovial membrane of some of the joints without deformation, as you remember that disease which leaks on the joints. Rheumatic arteritis, coronary arteries, aorta and really of various other organs, though very, very rare, and rheumatic pneumonitis and pleuritis with involvement of the lungs and pleura respectively. Again, that's very, very rare condition. For the diagnostic criteria, uh, clinicians use the Jones, so-called Jones criteria for rheumatic fever. So, first, there's the migratory polyarthritis. Second, that's pancarditis. That's major criteria. Then, subcutaneous nodules. Uh, fourth, erythema marginatum marginatum of the skin and fifth Sydenham Korea or Korea minor this one that Sydenham Korea also that's the major criteria to the minor criteria include Fever, arthralgia, prolonged, prolonged uh, PR interval, increased ECR or CRP, uh, and leukocytosis. So finally, 
diagnosis is established by this, this uh, Jones criteria, there's the evidence of the preceding group A streptococcal infection with the presence of two of the major manifestation listed earlier or one major or two minor manifestations. This minor criteria or non-specific signs. So this is the medcomic mnemonics for you, uh, which one is very useful to memorize this major Jones criteria for rheumatic fever. See joints, Jones for J, carditis. Okay, O here resembles the heart that we use for St. Valentine's Day. And for nodules, E for erythema marginatum, S for Sydenham chorea. That's the major Jones criteria. With the word rima, rima, as you remember, it was the fluid, bodily fluid, associated another disease, that's the rheumatoid arthritis. And now let's discuss about that. So rheumatoid arthritis, RA, in corners to RF for rheumatic fever, don't be confused. That's the chronic inflammatory disorder of autoimmune region that may affect many tissues and organs, but principally attacks the joints, producing a non-superative, proliferative and inflammatory, inflammatory synovitis. RA often progresses to destruction of the articular cartilage and ankylosis of the joints. Extra articular lesions may involve skin, heart, blood vessels and lungs and therefore the clinical manifestation can resemble other systemic autoimmune disorders, disorders such as systemic lupus erythematosus or scleroderma. The prevalence of the in the United States is approximately 1%. The disease peaks in the second to fourth decades and is three times more common in women than men. And here on this metcomic uh, mnemonics, you can see the, the major mm, diagnostic differences between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. You see, uh, basically, in case of osteoarthritis, they have the cartilage loss. In case of rheumatoid arthritis, there is the inflammation of the synovium. And you see the differences in the localization. Uh, which um, joints basically involved in both. So now you can see the major differences. That's the second mad comic mnemonics for today. So here you see the major etiopathogenetical uh, features of the rheumatoid arthritis. So basically this, as in other autoimmune diseases, genetic predisposition and uh, environmental factors contribute to the development, progression and chronicity of the disease. The pathologic changes are mediated by antibodies against self antigens and cytokine mediated inflammation predominantly secreted by cd4 positive t lymphocytes so cd4 t helpers cell may initiate the autoimmune response uh, in ra by reacting with an arthritogenic agent, perhaps microbial or self-antigen. The T-cells produce cytokines that stimulate other 
inflammatory cells to affect tissue injury. Uh, although a large number of cytokines can be isolated from inflamed joints, the most important ones include um, interferon gamma, uh, interleukin 17, TNF, and RANCO. And this TNF has been most firmly implicated in the pathogenesis or RA, and TNF antagonists have proved to be remarkable effective therapies for the disease. See the trigger events uh, associated with mycoplasma, EBV, CMV, rubella virus, sometime prior to the attic or RA. So similarly to uh, rheumatic fever, which is associated with the uh, predisposing infection here, also this uh, infection could be involved. It is estimated that 50% of the risk of developing RA is related to inherited genetic susceptibility. And a specific HLA DR4 and HLA DR1, DRB1 alleles are linked to rheumatoid arthritis, and these alleles share a common sequence of amino acids in a polymorphic region of the beta chain, which is designated the shared epitope. The shared epitope is located in the antigen binding cleft of the DR molecule. This location is presumably, presumably the specific binding site of the artritogens that initiate the inflammatory synovitis. As you remember, artritogens, that's exactly the cytokines that I mentioned above, TNF, for example. Linkage and genome wide association studies have also implicated the PTPN22 gene. Uh, this gene encodes a protein tyrosine phosphatase that postulated to inhibit T cell activation. Also, it's very important that many of the outer antibodies are produced in lymphoid organs. And in synovium are specific for so-called citrullinated peptides, CCPs, in which arginine residues are post-translationally converted to citrulline. And RA, antigen antibody complexes containing citrullinated fibrinogen, type 2 collagen, alpha analase, and vimentin deposit in the joints. Antibodies against this peptide are diagnostic markers for the disease and may mediate joint injury. Evidence suggests that the raised level of anti-CCP antibodies in combination with a T-cell response to the citrullinated proteins contribute to the disease becoming chronic. Additionally, about 80% of cases have serum IgM or IgA outer antibodies that bind to the FC portions of their own IgG. These outer antibodies, called rheumatoid factor, RA factor, and may also deposit in joints and immune complexes although they are not uniformly present in all patients with RA and can be found in patients without the disease, so the link to pathogenesis is questionable. So you see, the environmental uh, arthrogen, those antigens initiate RA by activating TOB cells finally. Uh, CCPs are produced during inflammation, so in cells such as infection and smoking, may promote citrullination of cell proteins. 
creating new epitopes that trigger autoimmune reactions. Morphology. Joints, joints, joints. That's the most important thing, uh, the most important site of injury. And uh, RE typically manifests as the symmetric, symmetric, keyword, symmetric. Look, just turning back to the metcomic mnemonics. You see the symmetrical injury of the joints. First of all, small joints. So that symmetric arthritis principally affecting the small joints of the hand and feet. The synovium, synovium becomes grossly edematose, thickened and hyperplastic, transforming its smooth contour to one covered by delicate and bulbous villi. The characteristic histologic features in, include synovial cell, cell hyperplasia and proliferation, dense inflammatory infiltrates, frequently forming lymphoid follicles or CD4 helper T cells, B cells, plasma cells, dendritic cells and macrophages. Thirdly, increased vascularity due to angiogenesis, that's the formation of granulation tissue. Fourth, fibrin are purulent exudative of the synovial and joint surfaces. Fifth, Osteoclastic activity in underlying bone due to activation of Ranko system and uh, allowing the synovium to penetrate into the bone and cause periarticular peri erosions and subchondral cysts. Together, the above changes produce a panus. A mass of edematose synovium, inflammatory cells, granulation tissue and fibroblast that grows over the articular cartilage and causes its erosion. In time after the cartilage has been destroyed, the panus bridges the opposing bones to form a fibrous ankylosis, which eventually ossifies and result in fusion of the bones called bony, bony ankylosis. Bony ankylosis. Swelling, ulnar deviation, so this is the rheumatoid arthritis of the hand. Its characteristic features include diffuse osteopenia, market loss of the joint spaces of the carpal, metacarpal, phalangeal and interphalangeal joints, periarticular uh, bony erosions and ulnar drift of the finger. This is so-called boutonniere deformity due to the contracture of the tendon and uh, swan neck deformity due to their distal interphalangeal joint flexion and uh, proximal interphalangeal joint extension. So late stages of rheumatoid arthritis may include uh, deformities that we have mentioned above, formation of nodules, and tendon rupture. For the extra articular lesion, we should uh, mention the skin lesion, this formation the subcutaneous nodule. They occur approximately in 25% of affected individuals. Usually those with severe disease and arising regions of the skin that are subjected to pressure, including the ulnar aspect of the forearm, elbows, occiput and uh, lumbar sacral area. 
less commonly they form in the lungs, spleen, pericardium, myocardium, heart valves, aorta and other viscera. Rheumatoid nodules are firm, non-tender and uh, round to oval and in the skin arise in the subcutaneous uh, tissue. Microscopically they resemble necrotizing granulomas with a central zone of fibrinoid necrosis surrounded by prominent rim activated macrophages and numerous lymphocytes and plasma cells. Blood vessels affected individuals with severe erosive disease, rheumatoid nodules and high titers of rheumatoid factor are at risk of developing vasculitis. The acute necrotizing vasculitis involves small and large arteries. It may involve the pleura, pericardium or lung involving into the chronic fibrosing processes. Frequently segments of small arteries such as vasa nervorum and the digital arteries are obstructed by an obliterating endarteritis resulting in peripheral neuropathy, ulcers and gangrene. Leukocytoclastic vasculitis is produced purpura, cutaneous ulcers and nail bed infarction. Ocular changes such as uveitis and carot uh, keratoconjunctivitis, similar to Sjogren syndrome, may be prominent. Variants of rheumatoid arthritis includes juvenile RA, age less than 16 years, predominant involvement of knees and ankles, and that in fact that's the independent disease now considered. Feltis syndrome. That's the polyarticular uh, articular RA associated with splenomegaly and hypersplenism, and ankylosing spondylitis or rheumatoid spondylitis, or Marie Schrumpel disease. Marie Schrumpel disease. Well, let's discuss briefly about uh, others rheumatic diseases. Ankylosing spondylitis, that's rheumatoid involvement of the spine, particularly sacroiliac joints in young male patients. You see that in this condition there is the strong HLA-B27 association. Also, it may have associated inflammatory diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, anterior uveitis, and Rader's syndrome. Ankylosing spondylitis belongs to the group of seronegative spondylar arthropathies. In this case, pathologic changes that begin in ligamentous attachment of bone rather than the synovium. Also, we may see involvement of the sacroiliac joints with or without arthritis in other peripheral joints. Also, include the absence of rheumatoid factor, hence the designation seronegative. Group of seronegative spondyloarthropathies also includes Rater syndrome, psoriatic arthritis, spondylitis associated with inflammatory bowel disease, and reactive arthropathies after infections. You see there specific feature on chelation spondyloarthritis is production of so-called bamboo spine appearance. Bamboo spine appearance. It's resembling the bamboo indeed. Because in this case there is a squaring of vertebra with spine ossification with fibrous bands run longitudinally called syndesma feet. You see, instead of the discs with the cartilage tissue, there is the formation of the bone. And this gradual deterioration, degradation of the intervertebral disc, you see, on um, this microscopic image of low power. That's lumbar disc and adjacent vertebral bodies show severe 
osteoporosis and fusion is mainly confined to the intervertebral disc, mainly in the region of the annulus. Systemic lupus erythematosus, type 2 or 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Systemic autoimmune disease capable of affecting virtually every organ of the body. is characterized by a wide array of antibodies against self antigens, neither organ nor specific, uh, spe species specific. SLE affects young women in either 20s or 30s. Uh, it's about etiology. First of all, predisposal genetic factors uh, guilty in that is a genetic predisposition to develop anti autoantibodies to nuclear and cytoplasmic antigens. Environmental factors, as certain drugs like penicillamine, the certain viral infections, for example, EBV infection, and certain hormones like estrogen. That's why it's strictly associated with the females. Systemic lupus erythematosus associated with type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Two risk factors belong to gene susceptibility, environment, UV radiation, sunlight, bacteria and viruses, smoking, estrogen, medication. The pathogenesis of the SLE includes abnormal immune responses by formal of various autoantibodies like ANA, ANA, antinuclear antibodies. Antibodies to double-stranded anti-DS DNA, the most, the, the most specific for SLE, and anti-Smith antibodies, anti-SM. Other non-specific antibodies like antiphospholipid antibodies or lupus anticoagulant, anti-RNP, anti-histone antibody, anti-ribosomal P antibody. For the clinical Diagnosis of the SLE, he used the criteria of which were considered by the and uh, finally consens uh, made a consensus by the American College of Rheumatology. Butterfly rash on the face, or malar rash. You see the butterfly? That's the third animal mentioned. Here, firstly, it was the caterpillar, second, it was the fish, and now we see the butterfly, third animal of this lecture. Rash of the face, second, discoid rash, three, photosensitivity, rash as a result of sun exposure, four, oral ulcers, five, arthritis, non deforming polyarthritis, six, serositis. Pleuritis or pericarditis and endocarditis, renal disorder, neurologic disorder, hematologic disorder, like leukopenia, lymphopenia, thrombocytopenia, and hemolytic anemia, immunologic disorder, antibodies to native DNA or Smith antigen, antiphospholipid antibodies. Antinuclear antibody in the absence of drug induced lupus. Morphology. The most characteristic microscopic findings you can find in skin, kidneys, and heart. In the skin, there's the granular deposits of immune complexes along the epidermal dermal basement membrane. See, that's why you see the development of such kind of lupus erythema. Butterfly rash. There's the wings of butterfly. Lupus, by the way, is the fourth animal of this lecture. Lupus in Latin means wolf. That's the wolf which bites the face of a young woman. Very, very cruel association, but it's a very serious disease. Lupus, wolf. Once again, four animals of this lecture. Just for your survey, caterpillar, fish, butterfly, and lupus. In the kidneys, deposits of immune complexes are found in the glomeruli, in the blood vessels, and in basement membranes of the tubules. Hard immune complex deposits are seen on the valves, most often on the mitral valve. 
for the uh, lupus nephritis diagnostic, I use four classes of the criteria. First class, the normal biopsy, that's the rare for lupus erythematosus, SLE. Class two, mesangial lupus glomerulonephritis. Class three, focal proliferative glomerulonephritis. Class five, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. And uh, four, uh, sorry, and class five, membranous glomerulonephritis. We will discuss about this type of glomerulonephritis uh, in appropriate topic. Cardiac pathology of SLE includes pericarditis, is the most common, endocarditis, or Liebman Sachs endocarditis, non specific myocarditis, accelerated coronary atherosclerosis, or Liebman Sachs endocarditis, along with a typical varicose endocarditis, which is seen in 50% of cases of acute SLE and may associate it with the uh, systemic sclerosis, thrombotic thrombus, cytopenic purpura, etc. So here uh, you can figure out how to distinguish different type of endocarditis. This is the comparison of the four major forms of vegetative endocarditis. Rheumatic fever phase of rheumatic heart disease is marked by small warty vegetations along the lines of closure of the valve leaflets. We will discuss later about infective endocarditis. You see this characterized by large irregular masses on the valve caps that can extend to the corda. <clears throat> In case of Liebman Sachs endocarditis, uh, there are small or medium sized vegetations on either or both sides of the valve leaflets. That's the small sterile vegetations, or mitral and tricuspid valves. The healed vegetation don't produce any significant valvular deformity in contrast to the uh, RF. It could be fibrinose or serofibrinose, and basically pericarditis is associated. Also, we can find the uh, cellular debris, including nuclear remnants, so called hematoxophilic bodies, as the uh, characteristic histological feature hematoxophilic bodies. See here, that's the Liebman Sachs endocarditis with the uh, Fibrinoid necrosis. Systemic sclerosis or scleroderma as the skin disease characterized by progressive fibrosis of dermis. Uh, limited localized scleroderma includes so called uh, includes so called crest syndrome. Crest abbreviation consists of C calcinosis or Renault phenomenon due to the spasm of digital arteries with uh, acrocyanosis. E as a fragile dysmotility, C, oh sorry, S sclerodactyly, T teleangiectasia. Two, systemic diffuse scleroderma, another type, there's the extensive involvement of the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, and it has visceral lesions too. Kidney, smooth muscle of GIT, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, lungs, small arteries. Atiopathogenesis includes uh, involvement of susceptibility genes. Uh, they're, uh, they're the occurrence of disease in families and in twins. Certain environmental factors, again, viral infections, prevalence of disease in some geographic locations. And again, similarly to uh, um, SLE, in this case, in case of uh, scleroderma, we see the involvement of antinuclear antibodies into the pathogenesis, which are detected in the majority of cases of systemic sclerosis. That could be an anti-DNA topo is isomerase antibodies, and anti-centromere antibodies are specific for limited scleroderma for Crest syndrome, anti-centromere antibodies. 
the immune mechanism lead to stimulations of fibroblasts. Clinical features, formation of claw-like flexion deformity of hands, renal phenomenon, esophageal fibrosis causing dysphagia and hypermotility, syndrome, syndrome of malabsorption, respiratory distress, syndrome malignant hypertension, pulmonary hypertension, and biliary cirrhosis. Here you see their claw deformity because fibrosis lead to the virtually embolizing the fingers, uh, creating the flexion deformity. And loss of blood supply due to the injury of the vessels lead to the cutaneous ulceration. Microscopically, you see on left extensive deposition of dense collagen in the dermis, comparing to the normal dermis here. And you see it's more homogeneous and disrupted with the chronic inflammatory infiltration. Inflammatory, inflammatory myopathies, including polymyositis, dermatomyositis, inclusion body myositis, they are associated with the progressive skeletal muscle weakness. These diseases are of autoimmune etiology and with association with other autoimmune collagen diseases. In this case, we see the presence of autoantibodies to the nuclear as cytoplasmic antigens in 20% of cases, B-cell infiltration and deletions, dermatomyositis, T-cell mediated cytotoxicity, CD8 plus T-cells along with macrophages and deletions, polymyositis, some non-immune factors such as viral infection with Coxsackie B influenza, Epstein Barr, CMV, and other uh, viral infections, they also are uh, responsible for the triggering of the autoimmune mechanism. Okay, people, that's the third and the last one, uh, Metcomic, uh, for today. And here you see the uh, difference between polymyositis and dermatomyositis so both of them both of them uh, belong to um, belongs to the inflammatory autoimmune myopathies but you see the difference is obvious in case of uh, polymyositis there is the cytotoxic CD8 cell addicts against the myofibers Both of them involve the inflammatory uh, mechanism of inflammatory myopathies with progressive symmetric proximal muscle weakness, including shoulders, hips, thighs, backs, pharynx, and neck flexor region. However, uh, in case of dermatomyositis, there are some uh, characteristic features like heliotrope rash. And the color resembling the heliotrope, that's the flower, so called shawl rash due to the localization, also Gothron sign, that's the rash over their joints, small joints of the wrist, and so called mechanics hand due to the injury of the small joints. So, as you may see, clinical features of the mm, dermatomyositis with progressive muscle weakness, mainly proximal skin rash, typically with heliotropic erythema and periorbital edema. Gotron papules are uh, violaceous, scaly patches that overlay their small joints. Dysphagia due to involvement of pharyngeal muscles, respiratory dysfunction, association with deep seated malignancies. And you see, there's the uh, non comic but real photo of heliotrope rash uh, and the histologic appearance of muscle shows perifascicular atrophy of muscle fibers and inflammation. 
Polyarteritis nodosa, type 3 hypersensitivity reaction, no associated disease. That's the necrotizing vasculitis involving small and medium sized muscular arteries or multiple organs and tissues. Inflammatory involving all the layers of the vessel wall. Uh, you see that this decreasing rate of the involvement, there are multiple localization of this systemic autoimmune disease. There are three stages, acute healing and healed stage with the different features like fibrinoid necrosis, then fibroblastic proliferation and uh, dense fibrosis. As you may see here, there is the outline of artery, which is destroyed, replaced by a layer of fibrin. The artery is dilated. There is the marked periodontal inflammation and gro uh, grossly it may lead to the formation of such kind of uh, aneurysms for example here in the coronary arteries for sure it may finally lead to ischemic heart disease associated uh, injury of the myocardium thanks for the attention uh, have a nice week and please don't forget to accomplish the google form sur survey after the watching this video in such a way you can uh, be registered for this uh, lecture and don't do not have the, any absence uh, however please don't forget to like our videos if you like it if it was really useful for you uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to study for to be uh, and to be uh, to become a good doctor bye bye good luck